What does it take for an average child born in a working class family to become one of Jamaica's top CEOs? Today, Richard Biles is the president of the Sagicor Group Jamaica, a world class financial institution that offers life and health insurance, banking, real estate, and pension services with total assets of over 300 billion Jamaican dollars. But his formula for climbing the corporate ladder is quite simple. Find out now in his story. I was born in, I believe it's called Kingston Gardens, which is where Little Q Road is. I remember my father calling me one day after he had got a report from school and I was like 15th in the class, right in the middle. And he said to me, you know, Richard, um, being mediocre is not a good thing. You really do need to strive to be better than mediocre. And somehow that one thing that he said stuck with me. Uh, so even when I worked with government, I tried to be exceptional. Whatever I was doing, I tried to do it to the best of my ability. And even though people used to see me as, well, he's involved in radical politics, they all would, always would say, but he does his job very well. Um, and that is a, a work habit that I've carried with me all throughout. When I went to JC, I was influenced quite a bit by what happened at the University of the West Indies. I remember in 1968, I believe, it was the Rodney Rats, and so the Black Power movement was just um, taking root. And um, I had a teacher from UWI who taught me at, in sixth form, and I used to get a lot of information about what uh, was happening on campus, and, he used to speak about the Black Power Movement, and I was very influenced by it. And I think that's where I started my early involvement in uh, radical politics. The year I went to university, Trevor Monroe returned from Oxford, um, and we became associated and um, helped to establish the University and Allied Workers Union, which was born on campus. Um, so between the Black Power Movement and the Socialist Movement, I became very involved and I, I must say I think studying took second place to politics. So I'm quite amazed that I actually graduated, uh, but it was a lovely time. I wouldn't have missed it for anything. I think that what I was most concerned about was um, social equity. Um, that I saw people as human beings, not as belonging to this class or that class or this race or that race. And I was very concerned that everybody um, had a equal opportunity to achieve what they wanted. So after UWI, I worked um, for government for mm, maybe about 10 years. Uh, again, I enjoyed it. Um, it took second place to politics, but it was fulfilling professionally nonetheless. Um, and then I went on to University of Bradford where I studied economics some more. And I think that experience at University of Bradford was quite different. It was far more focused on my professional development um, and on my career. And I developed uh, the passion for um, that technical side of, of my, um, my education. Um, so when I came back, um, a lot of change politically, a lot of the beliefs of socialism had unraveled. The Berlin Wall had fallen, Grenada was a big mistake and mess up. Um, and I retreated from politics and went much more into my professional career. When I came back from University of Bradford um, and I decided I wanted to um, keep my, develop my career and not so much in politics. Uh, the stock market was something that interested me and I started to invest in it and it happened to be at a time when the market was doing very well and so I got deeply involved and through Rita Humphreys, one of the persons who worked with me very closely, um, I did very well in the market and um, that led to speaking to Morris Vesey who um, I went to interview Morris about his company for the stock market, and at the end of the interview, he offered me a job. The job was to run this little bank that he had started. Uh, so I found that very interesting, and um, you know, it struck me that Morris believed in me and saw something in me that I didn't see in me. 
um, and I'm forever thankful to him for that. Um, and I took the job and two years later he promoted me to run his group um, and the rest is history. We took Panjam which was um, an organization that had some good components but some bad businesses and we cleaned out bad businesses and we built the good ones and it turned out that um, Panjam is one of the most successful companies uh, in Jamaica today and I'm happy to have been a part of that along with uh, Morris. So paying attention to what you are doing now and doing it very well is almost like playing golf. If you're going to play a shot you can't think of the next hole and the next shot. It's just a shot that is right there in front of you. You need to make sure everything about it is absolutely right. And that's the attitude I take to whatever I'm doing. Uh, it has to be done right. And what comes after takes care of itself after you have taken care of what is important right now. In reorganizing Panjam, uh, we had the bank and we had an uh, insurance company. And um, I organized the uh, merger of that bank and that insurance company with What Was Life for Jamaica at that time. Um, and in so doing, I came over to Life of Jamaica to run the merged entity. So that was back in 2004 and I became the CEO of that operation. And we rebranded to Sajikor, and uh, it's been 10 years, 10 really exciting years. I mean, I, I love the people I work with. I liken them to a stagecoach and being pulled by a bunch of stallions, though many of the stallions are female. Um, and I'm the coach driver, and my job is to encourage them to run fast, but to have a single direction. I want everybody uh, that um, is a leader in, in Sajikor to feel that whatever it is they feel is the right thing to do, that they can express it um, and that it has an opportunity to become part of our reality here. So I encourage ideas, I encourage people to have initiative, I encourage people to lead from the front. So I think that it's a team here that has really made the success for Sajikor. Reward and recognition is very big for us here. It really, um, I would say, is most deeply rooted in the individual life side where everybody works on commission. Nobody gets paid a, a salary. So um, to reward them and to recognize them. Because we find that um, just as importantly as earning is recognition when it comes to our individual life agents. They love to be known to their peers as being successful um, and they really relish those moments. Um, and what we have done is spread that throughout the whole organization. So uh, we have one big awards function um, and we recognize all of our top producers, whether they're in banking, asset management, group insurance, individual insurance, everybody gets recognized. Um, and we have a very substantial bonus system in the company that as the company does well, everybody shares in, um, in, the, in those profits. We would be about the third most profitable company listed on the stock exchange. Uh, we made 5.8 billion last year. Um, and we should top it again in this year. LOJ has always been a successful company. It ran into some problems in the mid-90s, but under Danny Williams' leadership, um, it was a very successful company. And I mean, I would see Danny as being an outstanding uh, entrepreneur and business leader. Um, so uh, not to take away from that performance at all, I think the way in which I operate and have done from 2004 is, as we spoke about before, teamwork. We measure customer service every month in every way we can. 
how many customers come here, how many complaints come in, how many claims we settle. We have metrics that we um, monitor every month. It's not just a how do I think customer service is going, it's what do the measures of customer service say. And we have somebody at the VP level who is in charge of customer service. We measure what their satisfaction is. And we take that seriously and we look to see what we have to do to improve on it. Our social responsibility, I would say, we uh, take just as seriously. Um, and we have two major functions that we do in the year. One is the Jamaica Teachers Association primary school games, which is really a treat to go and watch. All these hundreds of kids that come to town because uh, most of them are from the rural areas. Uh, they come to town, some of them for the first time, uh, they are put up in Kingston, they run at the National Stadium. I mean, they are in total awe to be at the stadium. And many of them are running barefoot. It's such a treat to watch these kids. They just enjoy themselves. Um, and some of our best athletes came up through that process. You see in Bolt and Shelley and Fraser came up through um, those championships. But of course, we're probably best known for the Sigma run. And um, that's where we raise, I think this year we're going to raise over $20 million. And we had over 22,000 participants. Just a wonderful expression of unity, family, fun, contribution, giving back, being sensitive to the needs of people. And every year we try to make it bigger and better. Um, so next year we're going to have to top the 20 million and we're going to have to top the 22,000 and we're going to have to make the experience even better for the participants. Sajikor is really in a number of businesses, um, the individual life insurance and the group health, pension and so forth. So group and individual, banking and asset management. We see that all as financial services um, and so too banking. Um, so we've always been interested in having a, a, a rounded full financial services offering uh, to the public. Uh, and we see a lot of synergies that can occur between um, all of those businesses. Recently, we have been involved in the hotel business, but really through our pension fund. So for our pension fund customers, we have these three hotels. Uh, Jewel Dons River, uh, which used to be the old uh, Sandals. Um, Jewel Runaway Bay which was Breezes, and Jewel Paradise Cove, which was Hedonism 3. More and more buying government paper is not as attractive um, and carries a certain amount of risk. And so we are more interested in investing in the real economy, and in particular in those areas of the real economy that are either foreign exchange earning or that uh, are replacing imports. Even though people used to see me as, well, he's involved in radical politics, they always would say, but he does his job very well. I encourage people to lead from the front. I think that it's a team here that has really made the success for Sajikor. We're probably best known for the Sigma Run. Just a wonderful expression of unity, family, fun, and every year we try to make it bigger and better. When opportunity knocks, 
when you sense opportunity, it's really important to go for it uh, immediately. Uh, don't delay and go for it to win. And I think that in the acquisitions that we have made in the, um, the 10 year period I've been here, two in particular, um, they have proven to be pretty decisive and they occurred um, pretty late. For example, Blue Cross, we heard Blue Cross was being uh, divested and that other parties were well on the way. Um, and when we heard that, we went in and made a decisive offer and uh, sealed the deal very quickly. Turned out to be excellent. Um, and similarly with RBC, when we heard that they were divesting the Jamaica operations, we heard late and we turned up at the party um, after many had been there before. But we are determined. We know that when we see opportunity, we have to be decisive about it. And that's what we did. We went in there to win um, and we played the game in that way, to win every time with every engagement that we made with them. And it turned out to be to our benefit and we were the winners. They are investments and they are unique investments. And when you come across a unique investment, that is one that will not return, you need to step up to the plate and be bold and do what you have to do. The recent uh, acquisition that has been announced of RBC in Jamaica will give it credit cards up and running right away. Um, and so we expect that as soon as we close that transaction um, within a few months, we will be uh, revitalizing that credit card effort and building it out. And that will give us another um, product line that we don't currently have. We have an excellent um, banking uh, persons in the form of Donovan Perkins, Philip Armstrong and others. Our intention is to make that bank, uh, which will become Sajikor Bank, an efficient, well-run entity, and then find ways to make the customers really like and enjoy the bank. I don't think that banks have the greatest reputation and affinity uh, amongst customers, and, and we see that as a challenge because we don't, in the insurance business, we, we don't believe that that has to be true. We believe that you can have a business that is profitable and run on business lines, but which is very friendly to customers, uh, very caring to customers. And we think we can do that again in the banking business. I think that anything that I undertake, I must have a passion for it. I try to keep my interests pretty focused on uh, just about enough that can fill a 12 hour day. I have a very strong work ethic, a very disciplined person, but it's more my passion about achieving in anything that um, I'm committed to. Uh, I think that that is the biggest leverage I have. That is really what uh, makes me search for a solution. Maybe I start in one direction and I fail, but I'm not giving up. I'm going another direction until I actually achieve what I want. And that's what I say to my sons too. It doesn't matter to me what you want to be. I, I didn't, uh, I don't want you to be a clone of me. Um, I just want you to be really passionate about what you do. Uh, because I think if you are passionate, then you will be successful. It doesn't guarantee success, uh, but it's the necessary foundation, not the sufficient. Um, so you have to bring hard-headed, common sense to bear on passion too. And it's that mix that determines whether you are successful or not. So sometimes you start out and you really love it and you try it and it fails. Well, pick yourself up, start out again. Find something else that you like, you think that is possible. When I came into the insurance business, it was the furthest thing from my mind because I am the furthest thing from an insurance salesman. Um, I'm a very introverted person um, and a humble person. And I find that to sell, you have to be quite the opposite. Um, and so, but I found myself in a circumstance and I had to 
uh, make the best of it and adopt and uh, be successful. And so even sometimes you may find yourself in a circumstance that is not what you want, but if it offers you opportunity, grab it, take it, adapt to it, um, and build a passion for it. Um, because success can, will feed on itself. And success, even in something you're not passionate about, builds passion for it. Passion can be learned and passion. You can adopt passion. The so-called IMF agreement is really Jamaica's plan. Uh, it's a plan to dig ourselves out of a massive hole of debt. One of the reasons that we have failed in the past is that there has not been sufficient public scrutiny. Uh, and so when the going gets tough, somebody makes an easy decision and we're back into the hole. This time around, I think we have learned that lesson and we have established EPOC, which is the Economic Program Oversight Committee. Uh, I'm the co-chair along with Brian Winter, who is the governor of the Bank of Jamaica. And what we uh, do is we watch very carefully the performance of the economy versus what the plan is. And the plan is very meticulous and very careful and very particular. Um, and from my point of view, I think it's the best thing that Jamaica could have at this time. A very carefully crafted pathway out of this enormous debt we are in. Now that doesn't mean to say that it's not painful. It is, and it is very painful to most Jamaicans, but we have no alternative. Um, and so I'm very committed to making sure that we stick to this plan, that we perform to the plan, um, and that we eventually dig our way out of the hole. Wealth creation. Uh, you have to invest. Um, it doesn't come from earning a salary and saving. Wealth creation comes from you taking some risk. For me, the stock market has been uh, really important in my wealth creation, uh, but it uh, that's so for some people and for other people it may be something else. You may be principally a worker uh, at the start uh, and you need to take some of those savings and invest it. And by investing it I don't mean put it in a savings account. You have to put it in something that is more aggressive than that. Uh, the stock market, a uh, unit trust, uh, um, a small business, uh, whatever it is. But that's, and be patient. Um, you know, uh, I, I think that a lot of people look on wealth creation as uh, tomorrow or next year. Um, for many of the people who have been successful in business in Jamaica, it's been a lifelong journey and they are where they are today after 10 years, 15, 20 years of being at it. Um, so it's a process of accretion. Sometimes it grows fast, sometimes it grows slow, sometimes it even shrinks on you. Um, so you have to be prepared to look to the long run. I don't think I have a very good balance of family life and work life, um, but I think my family have accepted that that's how I am. I get a lot of personal satisfaction from working. Um, and I think they have kind of said, well, that's the way Richard is, you know. Um, so if I want to pop into the office on Sunday, um, my wife will give some protestation, but she'll allow me, uh, so long as I don't stay here too long. She plays a big role in keeping the balance um, and keeping the channels of communication with our two sons open. Um, my, my sons being, well, being men, um, I have a special relationship with them and I've just, they've turned out to be two great uh, uh, men, um, you know, well grounded, uh, humble themselves and, and um, uh, very courteous, nice people. Uh, and you can't ask for a hell of a lot more than that. What they will become in life is entirely up to them. Um, I am no stereotype for them, I'm no roadmap for them. 
they need to find what it is in life that drives them on um, what is their passion and I'm happy so long as they are happy in doing um, what they what they like one of the things my wife and I share um, home really the, the house and the garden uh, but I've graduated from actually working in the garden very hard on Sundays to directing to where I am now which is critiquing so I don't <laughs> I don't even direct anymore, um, but I really like uh, a nice home and I like uh, a lovely garden and I enjoy being in it and seeing it and um, participating in it. Um, it's one of the things that relaxes me. Um, golf used to, but not so much anymore. I don't play much of that, um, but every now and then I will get out there and uh, if I'm dragged out there, I will. Success is really important to me. Um, I don't know why, but I just uh, am very driven to be successful at whatever I do. Um, but it has to come in uh, a way that um, keeps my reputation intact. I'm not, I don't want success at any price. I want success that I can walk on the road and hold my head high. Ordinary people in the street see me and say, hi, Mr. Bile. Sometimes they say, hi, Mr. Sajikor. Um, I like to have the feeling that there is respect there. Any day that people don't have respect for me, I think I would have failed. And um, it would be a very dark day for me. In particularly my work with the EPOC. Um, a lot of people come up to me and thank me for it. I, I don't know why they thank me. I, to me, it's a natural thing to do. Somebody who is wealthy with respect means that people think they've lived a good life, they're, they're good people, um, they've made a worthwhile contribution and if I had a choice between losing the material stuff that I have or losing the respect people may have of me, there's no question which one I would choose. As tough as it is to give up the BMW, I'd give that up to keep my reputation. <laughs>